When it comes to how long it takes your build pipelines to run, faster is always better. There's a new feature in Azure DevOps pipelines that might just have a dramatic effect on how long it takes your pipelines to run. Let's mash on that. Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of the ASP.NET Monsters. In today's episode, we're going to learn all about time compression and how it can be used to speed up builds. I mean, also to a bunch of other useful things, but mostly we're worried about builds. Is that, is that the trick? Not quite the feature oh. that I wanted to talk about today. Um, okay. So this one specifically has to do with how uh, your repo gets cloned as like that first part of the build when it goes and fetches all your code. Uh, so within Azure DevOps pipelines, there for a long time, there's been this concept of a shallow fetch which uh, when it does the, the git fetch to, to clone your, your repo locally, um, it does that and just asks for the specific commit that it's interested in building. And in theory, that makes it a much smaller download to do and it runs a lot quicker than trying to like clone the entire repo with all the history. Uh, however, for some repos, um, especially repos that had a lot of tags on them, so where you're like tagging releases or tagging hotfixes, um, and these tend to accumulate over time as a, a repo has more history. Um, it was still pulling all of the tags down, and that had the effect of still pulling down a bunch of objects and a bunch of history that we didn't expect to. And that was causing the git clone step, or the, the get sources step, to be a lot longer than we would have expected. Um, I've seen it on some repos taking like 40 minutes to clone a repo. Um, even though you were doing a shallow fetch. And shallow fetch basically didn't really have, um, it didn't really make a difference if you turned shallow fetch on or off. Um, so what I've done here is I, I just have a, what I did is I, I forked the .NET runtime repo because I was trying to find like a public repo that was a reasonable size. Uh, not too big that it took forever to actually demonstrate here, but big enough that we could see the difference in performance. Uh, and I, I created an Azure DevOps pipeline that was triggered based off of that um, that GitHub repo that I had forked. And if we look at it, I, my uh, my pipeline doesn't really do anything. It just does the checkout of that repo at the particular uh, commit, and then it doesn't really do anything else. It just runs a couple. It basically is a hello world pipeline. Uh, but it shows me here that it's taking one minute, 12 seconds to do that, to get the sources for this repo. And if I scroll down, well, first of all, I guess if we look at the, the actual command that it's running here, you can see that it's doing a git fetch here and it's specifying tags. So it's pulling all the tags down. And then down here, it's saying depth equals one. So that's how we know that it's doing a shallow fetch. Uh, it kind of does that by default for new pipelines uh, now within Azure DevOps, and it's getting just that specific commit. Uh, but if we scroll all the way down to the bottom, we can kind of see that it's still pulling down all of these tags, even though we really were only interested in that, that one commit. It's pulling all the tags and it, all the objects associated with those tags. So there's a lot of history that's still getting pulled down. Um, and let's see the difference, what the difference is when we turn uh, when we turn the no tags option on. And there's a couple different ways that you can do this. I'll link to the, um, to the documentation in the show notes. Uh, the way I'm gonna show you here is we'll come in to edit the pipeline. And hit continue, because it authorizes me every time I do that with a GitHub repo. Um, so there's a couple ways you can do this. One of them is to actually expli explicitly specify the checkout task here inside of our steps. It's not what I'm going to do this time. I'll link to that in the show notes so you can see how to do that. I'm just going to go to triggers here and switch over to the YAML tab. And that's where we have the uh, configuration within Azure DevOps for how it's getting the sources. And when you scroll down, there's a couple of options here. One of them is shallow fetch that's turned on. If it's not turned on, you might want to turn it on for your repo because it could probably make a big difference. And the other one is sync tags. So by default right now, anyway, sync tags is on. And for any existing repos, it would have been on. We can uncheck that. And then I'm just gonna save and queue a new build. So 
So the effect of that should be that when it goes to do the git fetch, it should add the no tags flag to that now. And it should run a lot quicker because it will actually only download that one, the whatever's in the git repo for that one commit. So let's see here. You can see that it in fact does have the, the no tags option here. And so it ran in about a minute and 15 seconds last time. And we'll see how quickly it runs this time. I think it runs in about 30 seconds was what it looked like when I tested this earlier. So we can see here, this is where it previously had all of those tags. And you know, so it ran in 33 seconds instead of a minute mm. and 15 seconds. So um, significant improvement. percentage wise, that's a big improvement. Uh, the .NET runtime repo is actually pretty clean in terms of um, how they keep it. They kind of try to keep it so that people can clone it relatively quickly. Uh, but I've, as I said, I've seen a lot of repos with a lot of history and a lot of tags and uh, they can take some, they're many, many gigabytes in size uh, if you're pulling down the whole thing and it can take, you know, half an hour, 45 minutes to, to download the whole thing. Um, but it can get down to just a few minutes uh, when you when you turn on shallow fetch and no tags. And you've been saying that uh, that's the, the way things used to be. Is the default different now? If I was to create a new... So with the new pipeline, pipeline the default is shallow fetch is on by default now. Okay. Uh, that's different. I think no tags... <clears throat> sorry, the sync tags option is still set to true. Like it does still pull the tags down by default uh, for new pipelines. And um, obviously for any existing pipelines, it's it's set to whatever it was previously. So you need to go in and make those changes. Hmm. Yeah. All right. So there, there's typically no, you, you would have to have written some special logic within your pipeline to need tags in there. Um, and that's not super common from what I've seen out there. So uh, I think this is something most most people can benefit from. Uh, just kind of a, a free performance boost. You just have to go and uncheck that checkbox. All right. Well, I know what I'm doing this afternoon. I'm going to go through and uncheck some checkboxes. Yeah. All right. Well, that's a great tip. And... Hopefully that saves people a bunch of time on their builds. And like you said, it's always nice to have fast builds. I'm never going to complain that the builds are too fast. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us on today's episode. Remember to like, comment, and share. And we'll see everybody on the next episode. Bye. Bye.